Imagine a city so packed that every street feels like rush hour. Every neighborhood teeters on the edge of bursting, and getting to work feels like a mini survival challenge. That city is Manila. With over 43,000 people per square kilometer, it is the most densely populated urban area on Earth. Pollution, traffic jams that stretch for miles, and public services stretched thin. Manila has become a pressure cooker of modern urban chaos, but something massive is underway. A project so ambitious, it's being called the Project of the Century. The Philippines is building its very first underground metro system, one that could transform how millions live, move, and breathe in the capital. And the story behind this mega project is far more dramatic than you'd expect. <laughs> to understand why this subway matters, start with a simple number, 42. That's the number of square kilometers that make up the city of Manila. It's tiny, about four-fifths the size of Luxembourg. And within this tight space, nearly two million people live, work, and try to move around daily, according to Business Insider. That's three times more crowded than the Bronx in New York and more than double the density of Paris or Mumbai. The problems this causes aren't just about traffic. It touches every part of life, Hospitals overflow, schools are packed, and even prisons have more people than they were ever meant to hold. Streets choke with vehicles, breathing becomes harder, not just because of heat and humidity, but also because of the air thick with smoke. And in the middle of all this, there's the daily grind. Going just 10 kilometers can take over half an hour. Across a year, that adds up to over 120 hours lost to congestion. That's five entire days spent just sitting in traffic. The roots of this problem run deep. Manila wasn't built for this many people. Its colonial design wasn't meant to hold a population that now rivals entire nations. After the Philippines gained independence, the city kept growing, but the roads, rails, and spaces didn't keep up. Slums expanded, floodwaters rose, buildings went up fast and cheap some unable to survive earthquakes or typhoons. The city tried to adapt, but its size and layout kept pulling everything back. Even past attempts to move the capital, like the creation of Quezon City in the mid-20th century, only partly succeeded. Government agencies split locations, logistics got complicated, and Manila stayed crowded. And as decades passed, the need for a deeper solution became harder to ignore. If you're enjoying this deep dive, hit that like button and subscribe for more real-world mega project breakdowns and the stories behind them. Now, back to what might be Southeast Asia's boldest subway plan yet. By 2017, the pressure in Manila was undeniable. Roads couldn't hold the traffic, and city services buckled under the weight of the population. Something had to give. That's when the Philippine government launched one of its most aggressive infrastructure drives in history. Build, build, build. This wasn't just a slogan, it was a sweeping national effort to rebuild the country's bones. Roads, bridges, airports, railways, and more. At the center of this movement was a vision, not just to fix Manila, but to stretch growth beyond it. The capital had become too full, too chaotic. The idea was simple make it easier for people and businesses to move and the rest of the country would breathe easier. But among the dozens of planned projects, one stood out, the Metro Manila subway. This wasn't just another train line, it was the country's first underground metro system, a major shift from the road-heavy transport networks of the past. It would cut through Metro Manila without disturbing its crowded surface, connecting key districts and even linking to the international airport the plan was big, fast, and bold. But what made it possible wasn't just ambition, it was funding and foreign partnerships. Japan became a critical player, stepping in with financial support, engineering expertise, and earthquake-resistant technology. This wasn't their first time helping with urban transit, and their experience gave the Philippines a much-needed edge. The partnership brought global standards into a city that had long lagged behind. 
as bulldozers rolled out and tunnels began to take shape, the subway transformed from a dream into a real plan on paper and ground. The goal wasn't just better transport, it was to unlock the capital, unburden its future, and change the face of Philippine infrastructure forever. The Metro Manila subway isn't just another transport project, it's a first of its kind, an underground railway that cuts across one of the most crowded urban zones in the world, stretching 33 kilometers from Valenzuela in the north to Paranaque in the south, this massive tunnel will eventually become the backbone of daily movement for Metro Manila. Philippines news agency reported that the rail line is designed to serve over 800,000 passengers every single day, drastically reducing the time people spend stuck in traffic or waiting for buses and jeepneys that crawl through the city's congested roads. Unlike surface-level transport, this subway dives beneath the chaos. It bypasses areas that are impossible to build on above ground, especially in central Manila, where there's simply no space left. The route even includes a vital connection to Ninoy Aquino International Airport, making the subway a powerful tool for both local commuters and international travelers. Each station is being engineered with modern safety features, from platform screen doors to earthquake-resistant construction. It's not just about convenience, it's about building something strong enough to last in one of the most disaster-prone regions in Asia. The tunnels are being reinforced with Japanese technology that's proven to hold up under stress, both natural and man-made. The construction officially began in 2019, starting in Valenzuela City. Progress hasn't been as fast as hoped. By August 2024, only about 16% was completed, but the vision remains intact. Partial operations are expected by 2028, with full completion projected around 2032. Delays, setbacks, and budget challenges have all made headlines, but the blueprint hasn't changed. This is a long game, and when finished, this subway won't just be a transport fix. It'll be a symbol of how Metro Manila plans to move forward not just functionally, but economically and socially too. The Philippines isn't building this subway alone. Behind the scenes is a powerful partner, Japan. Through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, Tokyo stepped in with billions of dollars in loans, technical guidance, and engineering support. But this isn't just a financial handshake. It's a strategic partnership rooted in long-term regional ties and a complex past. The loan agreement for the subway was signed in 2018. Construction officially started a year later, and Japanese companies took the lead in tunneling, planning, and outfitting the system. Japan didn't just supply money. It brought in engineers who understand what it takes to build railways under pressure, literally. Their experience with seismic design became essential. Manila sits in an active earthquake zone. Without Japan's input, the subway's deep tunnels could become a risk rather than a solution. But there's more to the partnership than numbers and blueprints. There's history, especially around World War II, when Japan's occupation of the Philippines left scars still felt today. Some see this collaboration as a kind of quiet reparation, a way for Japan to support a country it once harmed by helping build a better future. In many ways, this subway stands on more than steel and concrete. It rests on decades of complicated diplomatic effort. Japan also helped with other parts of the Build 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 program, including the North-South Commuter Railway and studies for other key infrastructure. These aren't just projects, they're pieces of a regional puzzle. Japan's involvement ensures international standards, safety, and oversight, which gives the project more stability than many local efforts of the past. The result is a system being built not just with speed or ambition, but with precision. And that may be exactly what Metro Manila has always lacked. Infrastructure that isn't rushed, but ready for the future. Building something as massive as an underground subway in a city as crowded as Manila was never going to be smooth. Even before the first tunnel was dug, challenges began piling up. When construction kicked off in 2019, it was just months before the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the globe. The Philippines wasn't spared. Lockdowns, restrictions, and redirected public funds hit the project hard. 
progress slowed and priorities shifted. Public health took center stage and infrastructure had to wait. But the virus wasn't the only issue. One of the most difficult and controversial parts of building the subway has been clearing the path for it. Properties along the route were marked for expropriation and residents were relocated, many against their will. These forced movements sparked public protests and legal battles. The right-of-way process quickly became one of the most contested parts of the project. On top of that, construction delays, rising costs, and logistical problems pushed the timeline further out. By mid-2024, the subway was only 16% done, with hopes of partial operation by 2028. Critics questioned whether the project would ever be finished as planned. Despite this, the government has continued pushing forward, believing the long-term benefits will outweigh the early struggles. But trust from the public still hangs in the balance. If the Metro Manila subway is completed as planned, it won't just change how people move, it could change how the country grows. Metro Manila has long been the economic heart of the Philippines, but it's also a bottleneck. Roads are jammed, housing is tight, and businesses lose money from delays and gridlock. This subway could be a release valve. By making commuting faster and more reliable, people could live farther from the city center without sacrificing access. That would open up growth in surrounding areas, reduce overcrowding, and ease pressure on Manila's crumbling infrastructure. It's not just about transportation, it's about shifting how and where people live and work. Environmental impact also matters. Fewer cars on the road means cleaner air and lower carbon emissions. With proper integration into existing rail and bus systems, the subway could become a green backbone for urban mobility. There's also the economic boost. Jobs from construction, investments in surrounding areas, and improved logistics could lift communities that have long been left behind. The subway could serve as proof that the country can deliver on big promises, attracting even more investment. If it works, the Metro Manila subway won't just fix traffic, it will shape the future of how the Philippines builds, lives, and connects. I'm really grateful for your time and attention. I spend hours curating the best information possible for you and then try to present it in an entertaining way. So if you appreciate that, it would be awesome if you could buy me a coffee so I can caffeine up and make more videos like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Next up, Singapore is building $100 billion of artificial islands. You won't want to miss it.